The gentlewoman from Richmond City, Ms. McClellan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of personal privilege. The gentlewoman has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I'd like to um, thank the gentleman from Virginia Beach for giving the first of our uh, vignettes in, in uh, African American history on this, the first day of African American History Month. But I want to talk just a little bit about the importance of Black History Month or African American History Month and how it's still relevant to what we do here every day. Last, uh, a couple of years ago, I had the pleasure of attending a forum called North of Broad, South of Broad. Broad Street was the historical dividing line between black neighborhoods and white neighborhoods here in the city of Richmond. At that forum, we heard from uh, uh, Secretary of Education Holton explaining her experiences when she and her sister integrated Richmond City Schools, which is a well-known story and well-known picture. But we also heard from another woman uh, who told the story of Carol, I Carol Irene Swan and Gloria Meade, who were the first African-American students to integrate Chandler Junior Middle School uh, here in the city of Richmond. They were very different stories. Everyone saw the picture of each set of girls walking into their school buildings. Very few people heard the story of what happened afterwards. And Ms. Swan told how once the cameras were gone, the terror began. She said before she integrated, her family started to receive calls. She had never heard a curse word in her life until she picked up the phone and heard complete strangers cursing at her for daring to integrate a Richmond City school. She told of how the first time her gym class went to bowling, it was the first time she'd ever been to a bowling alley. And the two of them were told, you have to go to the end of the, um, of the uh, counter to get your shoes. The Department of Education had bought bowling shoes in every size for those two girls so that the owner of the bowling alley could ensure his customers, his shoes weren't touched by black feet. She talked about every day the little slights and cuts, verbal, that they experienced. And then she said as soon as she could, she left Virginia. Sitting in the audience was a white member of the Richmond School Board who came up to me afterwards and said, I had never heard these stories. That school board member was in the middle of what is one of the most contentious school board issues, school rezoning consolidating schools and redrawing lines, which brought out heated discussion, particularly along the lines of race. And that school board member understood for the first time why that issue was so passionate for so many people. You all have heard me tell the story of my great grandfather who when he went to register to vote, was not only given a literacy test, but when he got the answers all right, was told we need to go find more questions because this fill in the blank got them all right. And that is why members of the Black Caucus are so passionate about any bill that we perceive could limit the right to vote. The reason these stories are so important is because we now live in an age where a majority of Virginians and a majority we're pretty close to the members of this hall, this body, and the one down the hall, either grew up in an integrated society or came of age after Jim Crow. And as a result, because we didn't live it, we don't understand how deeply felt the resentments still fester in many of our communities on both sides until we see them flare up through news stories or political fights. The reason Black History Month is so important, and I encourage you to study black history all year, is because it helps us to understand how public policy today could still have a disproportionate impact 
on certain communities. It is important for us in the quiet moments to learn that history so that when those issues come to the floor, we, we can debate them rationally and have a rational conversation, not one soaked in the emotion and pains of festering wounds. So as a result, not only do I encourage you to listen to each of the stories you're going to hear this month, but I encourage you to visit two museums, one that will open and one that will reopen this year. Here in the city of Richmond, the Black History Museum and Cultural Center of Virginia will be moving to its new home at the Armory on Lee Street. I invite you to go and see the exhibits there. And then also this fall, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the new Smithsonian Museum will open on the National Mall. I encourage you to visit that museum. But more importantly, every one of us have places of importance to African Americans and in our history in our districts. I invite you to go visit them. And I invite you to speak to some of your constituents who lived through Jim Crow, who lived through the school integration fight, who lived through the civil rights movement. Listen to their stories and think about how you would have felt if you were in their show, shoes, and then remember that when we have a bill that causes someone to have very passionate views one way or another, it's because you can't fully understand where you're going until you understand where you've been. And until we understand the history and the stories and the lives of all Virginians, we will never fully represent them all. Thank you.